meet Tim. He is the boss of the Pink Panthers Detective Agency. Tim is a very cheeky and mischievous chap. Usually you can find Tim reading How to Train Your Dragon books. He has striking ginger hair. With bottle green eye, cat-like eyes, he can see well in the dark. Tim's special skill is that he can fly a jumbo jet. This is Chip. His role in the agency is second in command. Chip is a hilarious, funny person with a clumsy, crazy personality. His hobbies are skydiving, swimming, problem solving and drawing maps. Wherever he smells food, especially chips, he drifts to wherever he, the greasy smell is coming from. Unlike his teammates, Chip always has a plan. Wherever it, they are fighting deadly alligators in a river or swinging from tree to tree, escaping from a vicious ape. This is Brain. He is the maths man and brains of the Pink Panthers Detective Agency. He has a playful golden Labrador who pounces like a lion. As his name suggests, he is by far the smartest of the group. His giant overloaded brain has won him many fabulous national competitions. He likes to have a challenge when playing tennis, so Brain goes against the best. He always likes to wear his neon orange t-shirt with a gorilla. He also wears a hat and bag like Indiana Jones. He is a tall, towering person. Brain is a happy, amazing boy. One afternoon, three detectives were minding their own business when... Man, this class looks hard. Ooh, what have you got there? It's a letter. Hmm. Hmm. Dear Pink Panther Detective Agency, I am Todd Jerome Waffleton, a Chinese-speaking Colombian policeman. It might come as a surprise to you, but I'm your great times eight uncle. Brain is also Song Craig's, surely you've heard of him, great times eight grandchild. If you're wondering who Solomon Clegg was, he was a great adventurous British explorer who worked with Christian Columbus, founder of America, and explorer Louis Jimenez. Hey, give me that. Anyway, I'm not here to tell you about Solomon Clegg or Jimenez, which would be fun, but to tell you about El Dorado. El Dorado is made entirely of solid gleaming gold. Ooh. It lies deep in the heart of Colombia. Columbus set Clegg and Jimenez a mission to find El Dorado. Unfortunately, they didn't fulfil their task. See that. Your task, whether you choose to accept it or not, it would be really helpful if you did, hint, hint, is to find the two identical maps that Jimenez and Clegg have been given. Here are all the instructions and rules you will need to follow to be successful at this task. Find the map. Remember to look up. Travel to Colombia. Go to the Heathrow Airport and catch an easy jet plane to Colombia. You have seven days to get here. Secret regards, Todger and Waffleton. So they set off to fulfil their exciting quest. Let's go! Let's go! Yay. Hope for the best! Hope for the best! The best, the best, best. Yeah. flight was forgiven by the luxurious qualities of the easy jet plane. Todd booked us an awesome plane. I couldn't even feel a tiny jolt because the cushioning was like foam. A terribly late taxi finally arrived, but the driver was an amazing chatterer. My brain probably squished out of my mouth with laughter. The town centre of Cartagena was unbelievably colourful, along with the rest of the town. An amazingly majestic waterfall stood there, streaming down a perfectly shaped fountain. The yellow American taxi left us there, where the colours almost blinded me, even with my sunglasses. A five-star hotel of ours made any other hotel look to shame. Our room stood on the fourth floor with a fabulous balcony overhanging the town. We would explore it later. Sprinting to the taco stand was when it happened. The bursting with colour, energetic carnival was in full flow. Dancers were dancing, drummers were drumming, floats were floating, and me, Brain, Tim? Go. Well, we were eating tacos and watching the samba band, all until someone threw a hessian potato sack over our shaking heads and shoved us in a rusty ancient car! I'm guessing.
noticing that, I couldn't see a thing what with the sack over my head. Kidnapped on the first day, great, just great. Boom boom. Well, we're here kids. We're 21, me, 23, Brain, and 24, Tim. Actually, I say through gutted teeth. Why are we even here? Who's captured us? Where are we? Juanita Jimenez, he whispered. She's the one who kidnapped you. Jimenez wants revenge. Jimenez? Dear diary, suddenly I found myself in a dark, grotty cell. If Clegg hadn't stolen the gold, if we hadn't gone to Cartagena, then we wouldn't be here. A gigantic tattooed guard has told me the whole story. Right, this is how the story goes. Apparently, we were kidnapped because Solomon Clegg allegedly stole gold from Jimenez's family 500 years ago during the mission Christopher Columbus set them. Our kidnapper, Juanita, is Jim Jimenez's great times eight granddaughter, like Brain, is Clegg's great times eight grandson. She must want revenge, or did Todd Jerome Wafferton set us up? Dear Diary, it is the spooky dead of night. All I have is a few pairs of torn, filthy and tattered rags, which give me no warmth at all, that have more than likely been used by other prisoners that have been held hostage. If they cared about me, if they had any respect for me, then they would give me a bed and some decent food at least. They're treating us like pieces of dirt on the bottom of their shoes. I am absolutely starving. Also, there's no chips in sight. And to add to the raging matter, they're feeding us mouldy, rotten mussels and seaweed. To make the situation even worse, the mussels are raw. If the guard wasn't, if it wasn't so freezing cold, if the fat guard wasn't soaring so monotonously, then I could get some well-needed shut eye. What is happening to me? In the dead of night, a mysterious figure tiptoed up to me and whispered in my ear. I am Todger and Wafton. Shh, do not move a muscle. I am going to get you out of here. I woke up the others and all three of us were so relieved that we could escape. We crept out. Todd passed us a map. And he said, follow this and you might just find our answers from the wisest person in Colombia. Looking across at the captivating sea green sight of the Amazon River, the three adventurous detectives are starting their search for a cool rubber ring for Chip. Bewildered and trepidatious, ecstatic and wary, the Pink Panthers are continuing their discussion about not knowing what to do in the next part of their lively quest. But, 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 what happens if my cool rubber ring doesn't work? <laughs> Don't worry about it. You'll be fine. Yeah, you'll be fine. Thanks, guys. Let's go. Floating in the Mankey River, the heroes are paralysed by the disgusting smell. However, they are still reading their exciting books. Maddened, Tim's, Tim throws his shiny black shoe at the multicoloured parrot, thinking, gosh, shut up. How is this even fun? It's so scary. Charlie. Come on, you two. Pull yourself together. We have more important things to worry about. Ow. What did you do that for? <laughs> I was only worrying about my dog. Quick, what was that noise? Uh. Hey, look! A map. Floating gently along the Amazon River, the Pink Panthers stare in awe at the massive trees dotted thickly around them. They're shooting down the grimy river in a brightly coloured motorboat, while hoping they're not going to be eaten by a caiman. Feel sick. Can we get off yet? No, Brain, we can't get off now. We have to carry on with our mission. Hey guys, keep our hopes up. Let's do our super secret special handshake. Good idea. We're nearly there anyway. Pink Panthers! Hope for the best, expect the worst. In the immense, gigantic Amazon rainforest, the detectives see something moving in the quickly bushes, worried 
They see a caiman with scaly, scary scales. What are they going to do? Look, there's a horrible scaly caiman! Uh, it will rip you to shreds in its 2.5 metre eating zone. I think we're in its 2.5 metre eating zone. In the tropical ear splitting Amazon rainforest, Tim is fighting an immense scaly lizard. Alarmed and staggered, Brain and Chip are wondering if Tim will come out with no broken bones. The three adventurous detectives are in the amazing Amazon River. They are trying to make a campsite. Bewildered, the Pink Panthers wonder if they will ever see the most eldest, wisest person in Colombia. In the gigantic, fearsome rainforest, the three detectives are setting up camp in the dim, cricket-filled night. Stressed and depressed, Tim and Brain are wondering if they can ever get some well-needed sleep. Somebody tell me how to put this stupid hammock up. Do it here, I'll do it. Sit here and I'll do it. Well done. Curious and suspicious, stealthy and silent, the pink panthers are hunting for hairy apes with long winding tails. Mind lost, they shoot a poison dart at an innocent, unsuspecting spider monkey swinging through a gargantuan junglewood tree. I'm scared of hairy legged creatures. <laughs> Put yourself together, Chip. It's not that kind of spider with fangs full of venom. It's a monkey. Oh, let's shoot us some dinner. <coughs> Yay! Yeah. In a hammock up a tree, the three detectives are trying to get some sleep. Exhausted, two of the detectives are covering their ears, wondering if Chip will ever stop snoring. In the dreadful, horrible, steamy jungle, a majestic, colourful parrot squawks from an ancient old tree. Shocked and wary, the three detectives don't know if they can trust the parrot's directions. Do you just hear a parrot talk? Don't be ridiculous, Chip. Actually, I agree with Chip. Hi, if you're looking for the wisest man in Colombia, well just go straight ahead and you'll find him. High under tall green rainbow trees, the detectives tried to find the leader of a tribe. The leader was called Shalalangu. Nervous, they walked to Shalalangu, the bright red tribe's leader, to ask him where the wisest man in Colombia lives. Look, a village. We need to find the leader, Shalalangu, where the wisest man in Colombia lives. Do you speak English? Yes, of course he does. I know what you want. Follow me and I'll lead you to the white right one. As the Pink Panthers arrive at the abandoned village, a dark wood door mysteriously opens and a man spoke. Worried, they step into the small dark house. On the unstable bark doorstep of the wisest man in Colombia's bungalow, the three detectives are chatting about who should open the heavy spruce door. Brain, getting annoyed that nobody is open it, kicks the living daylight out of it. Remember inviting any young? Oh, we brought back. Are you okay, sir? We're Tim, Chip, and Brave from the Pink Panthers Detective Agency. Okay, nice to meet you. In the morning, 
pokey kitchen of the bungalow, the three detectives are trying to get an idea of what the old man was going on about. Fascinated, the Pink Panthers are thinking he's a jolly old fellow, but he is brain-burstingly clever. We need to go to a paradise like place like, named Lake Guadavita to solve your bewildering mission. Where are we in Gargantuan Immense Calendar is that? Well, we survived a deadly bar reptile getting here, so we should be ready for anything else. Bray's got a brilliant point. The pink panthers are standing in the ancient, dilapidated doorway to the bungalow of the wisest person in the whole of Columbia. Excited, their minds exploding with amazement and curiosity at the quest that lay ahead of them, all thinking another fantastic and glorious day of, of detective work. Come on, what are we waiting for? Let's go! So all we need to do is follow this old wrinkled map to the Lake Guatavita. This map is impossible to read. How will we ever get there? Well, if my calculations prove me to be correct, we need to go to northwest for exactly 3.76 miles. Don't worry, if we get lost, I know the way. But with Brain here, I doubt it. In the middle of the Amazon rainforest, Brain catches a glimpse of the magnificent lake. In the multicoloured leaves, millions of vicious animals scuttle around like mice after cheese. At the edge of Lake Guatavita, Brain is enjoying the peaceful atmosphere. The water is as clear as glass. On the pebble-filled beach, the agency are devastated when they hear that El Dorado is just legend. They listen as the wise old man tells them how the rumour started. The Muisca tribe used to put gold into the lake as an offering to the sun. There was no city of gold. In a mountain-filled terrain, the leader of the Pink Panthers, Tim, suggests to his teammates a plan, a fantastic and amazing plan, they must go back to Cartagena to confront the kidnappers. Wait! We have a 0 0.01 chance of not being caught. Really? Who are they? They're the people that kidnapped us, of course. I was being sarcastic. Come on, let's follow them. They might take us to Juanita Jimenez's house. Dangerous. Remember to bend your legs before you land. No, not a window. Do you want to escape or not? over there from the army. Let's ask them. Great brain, let's go. Forward march. Um, hello? Sorry? It's down here. Eh, what do you want? Well, we're in a bit of a situation here where one, a bunch of gang, a 
man is chasing us through the uh, Cartagena. Two, the British explorers on a mission. And three, the ship is hungry. And that's bad news. Ah, stupid kids. Looks like we finally escaped. Nice try, detectives. Uh oh. We do not take kindly to strangers. You're under arrest for kidnapping, attempted murder, and actual murder. You deserve the right to stay under the net. It was an adventure and a half. It was indeed. Let's go home for hot chocolates and chips. Dear Juanita, I am writing to you to explain the complicated truth of El Dorado, the revenge and the legends of our ancestors. Unfortunately for you, I am not writing to liberate you from your cell. <laughs> it might be hard on you, but you really deserve it. When Todrow Waffleton sent us a letter saying that we had a new mission on our hands, we thought it would be like any other case. Fun, easy, safe. However, it was far from it. The tales, the legends, the myths that, we were, that were told were slightly disappointing. I am sure you will be heartbroken that there is no such thing as the gold glistening El Dorado. You will probably shred this piece of scrappy paper into a billion microscopic pieces. Therefore, this is my last paragraph. El Dorado is a myth, a legend, a tale, whatever you want to call it. But you need to understand that the lost city of gold isn't real. I am glad you know the truth. Yours sincerely, Tim. Boss of the Pink Panthers Detective Agency.